The power of worship is demonstrated in Exodus chapter 17 verse 9 to 13 as the Bible says, So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek while Moses, Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. When Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun, and Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. As long as Moses held up his hands, as long as he kept the focus on God, as long as Moses remained in a position that was submitted to the Lord, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. I believe that there is a lesson for us to learn here. Instead of focusing on the problems in front of you, if you simply lift up your hands, and focus on Jesus Christ. That's how you will overcome. That's how you will gain the victory. Jesus Christ is far greater than the enemy who is in front of you. So why focus on the enemy? The enemy is insignificant if the Lord is by your side. The enemy is insignificant if your focus is on the Lord. That's exactly what Moses did. He could have picked up a sword and joined his fellow brothers in battle, but he instead lifted his hands to worship the Lord, despite the battle in front of him. I encourage you to do the same. I urge you to praise and worship God despite the enemy that you face today, despite the problem that you face today. You see, to worship the Lord is to focus on Him. When you worship Him, you are effectively saying, Lord, with all that is within me, I can only praise you. I can only tell you how good you are because there is simply nothing else that I can offer you apart from my adoration. Saints, as believers, we ought to worship the Lord with our heart, mind, soul, body and spirit, telling Him that He is almighty, He is faithful and merciful, He is worthy of our deepest respect and our complete devotion. Now let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you would renew my mind, transform my mind, so that there may be a shift in how I think. Help me to keep a perspective that is fixed on you, an eternal perspective. Help me to see the problems that I face through the lens of faith. Instead of always praying for you to deliver me from this fire, may you shift my perspective so that my prayer can be for your power to be demonstrated through this fiery trial that I am in. Lord Jesus, I lift up my hands as a sign of surrender. Have your way and may your will be done. I lift up my hands to signal 
that I am letting go of trying to control things. I lift up my hands to signal that I am relying on your amazing grace and on your love. I accept that your will is better than mine. Your ways are higher than mine. Your timing is better than mine. Father, instead of fighting the battle in front of me, I will focus on you, the one who holds all power. Rather than relying on my own might, I will rely on your strength, Lord Jesus. I will place my faith in you. I pray that my hands would always be lifted in worship to you. And regardless of whether I am in chains like Paul and Silas, may you be praised, Lord. Whether or not disaster strikes, may you be praised, Lord Jesus. If I am tired and weary, I pray that you would give me strength through the Holy Spirit to praise and to worship you. Even if the enemy attacks, may I be protected by the fact that my hands will constantly be lifted up in worship to you, Lord. When I have no other choice but to face the difficult circumstances that I am presented with head on, I pray that you would stand with me, Lord. I invite you to stand with me. Strengthen my faith and belief so that I can stand on 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9, which says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. And so I declare that whatever giant, whatever mountain or obstacle that I face, it will not crush me in Jesus' name. It will not drive me to despair. It will not leave me forsaken. It will not destroy me in Jesus' name. I pray that your name, Lord, may be glorified through all of my trials. Your word gives me strength and courage to face the future. I pray that the Holy Spirit would shift my perspective through God's word. May I begin to see my problems and difficulties through Psalm 91 verse 7 to 10 which says, A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. Help me, Holy Spirit, so that I may stand on this promise, so that I may believe in this promise even when things are tough. There is no evil there is no darkness that will come near me because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Father, let my first instinct be to hand over every situation to you. I pray that my first instinct would be to drop my carnal weapons and instead worship you in spirit and in truth. I choose to trust in an ever-faithful God, 
and I acknowledge that even when things don't go my way, you are still sovereign and you are still a good God. I pray that you may see my lifted hands as a sign of a heart that is filled with gratitude and thanksgiving. I pray that you would see my hands lifted as an invitation for you to come into my circumstances and have your way. I invite your presence, Lord, to come and dwell within me. May you come in and do as you please in any given circumstance. I choose to let go and let you handle things, Father. Your word in Psalm chapter 29 says, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Your word says, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. You, Lord Jesus, sit enthroned as King forever. I pray that the Holy Spirit would help me never to take my eyes off you, Father. Don't allow me to waver in fear even for a second. In the face of adversity, I pray that you would strengthen me to keep my hands lifted high and to always be found in worship. Father, you deserve all the praise and honour. You deserve all adoration. Even the angels in heaven always sing and worship you, saying, Holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. I pray and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, that I will not be paralyzed by my problems. I will not be left in a state of weakness by what I face. I refuse to allow the spirit of fear to pollute my perspective. I refuse to be influenced by fear in Jesus' name. I invite you, Lord Jesus, to invade my heart. Shift my perspective so that I may indeed see that Romans 8 verse 28 is true and all things do work together for those who believe in the Lord. May the Holy Ghost help me to see the power of God in every situation. May he help me to see the grace of God the love of God at every hurdle. I bless your name for listening to this prayer, Lord. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and I cast all of my burdens, all of my cares and worries to you, Lord. Continue to help me to keep my eyes fixed on you, the one who never sleeps nor slumbers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.